Hello and welcome to PLG Digital with myself, Darren Leggett from the Property Ladder Group. Today we're going to be speaking to Nick Howitt of Fraser and Fraser. Hello Nick, how are you today? Very well, thank you Darren. Wonderful. So Nick, tell us a little bit more about who you are. I'm the business development manager at Fraser and Fraser um, for the legal team. So effectively, it's my job to visit as many solicitors and probate practitioners up and down the country as I can, just selling the, the services of Fraser and Fraser. It's quite a big job. There's a lot of, lot of ground to cover. So tell me about a rough day. So what would what, what you, not a rough day, obviously. But tell, <laughs> tell me about a day in the life of Nick, Nick out, out on the road. So out on the road, I tend to get up at six o'clock in the morning most Ooh, days. Dear. If I can get out on the road for seven o'clock, um, generally my first meeting will probably, I'll try and book it in quite early, so about half nine, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, the meetings, depending on how many people we actually have in the meetings, will last anything from half an hour to an hour and a half, perhaps. Um, and then, like I say, that depends on how many people actually attend. So we could have, it could be a one-to-one -one meeting with a solicitor, it could be a team of uh, probate practitioners, which is obviously what I would prefer. Um, or, you know, it could be a whole network of solicitors. It just depends. But generally, the meetings will last anything from half an hour to an hour and a half. Um, my next meeting, again, I will try and make it locally. It's, it's working out logistics more than anything. Sure. So I'll try and get that one booked in for about 12, half 12. Um, then I'll take some time for lunch. <laughs> Um, normally about half an hour sat in my car on the edge of the M25 somewhere. Um, and then in, in the afternoon, generally try to pick up a meeting about two o'clock or three o'clock and then make my way home or staying at a hotel, depends where I am in the country. All sounds really familiar to me, Nick. It's, it's quite a full on job, lots of miles, lots of people to see. How do you stay motivated? Because there must be times where you think, goodness me, this is hard, hard going, especially if you've been away for a couple of nights. It is, um, but I, I, I love it, to be perfectly honest. I mean, when lockdown hit, um, it didn't really change a great deal for me in terms of meeting my clients because obviously Zoom meetings and whatever. Mm. Um, but I actually missed being out on the road. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, you know, when you used to do it in your previous lives as well, I'm sure there was an element of enjoy enjoyment for you as well. But, you know, I am away quite a bit, perhaps two or three nights a week. Um, that does have a strain on the relationship sometimes. But the reason I stay motivated, I think, is because I know we have a good service. It's a very easy sell to solicitors. Um, phrase and Fraser have got 50 years worth of experience. And I don't really have to sell Fraser and Fraser in the first instance because primarily but the majority of solicitors that I talk to know who Fraser and Fraser are anyway. So you kind of get over that first hurdle. Leads me quite nicely onto my next question. I mean, Fraser and Fraser, how did you end up there? Because, I mean, they are a great, great, well-known organisation. They're very prestigious within the industry. What took you there, though? What kind of made you think, right, this is where I want to be? And how did you make that happen? I've been in genealogy um, for the last, goodness me, time flies, uh, probably the last, I think, 12, 13 years now. Wow. Um, I used to work for one of Fraser and Fraser's competitors. I always loved genealogy. Um, it's such interesting work. And I think some of the stories that can be told out of it are, are great as well. And perhaps we'll go into a case later on as an example. Um, and then I moved, I actually did move away for two years um, to become a, a network director of uh, quite a big solicitors group. Um, but Fraser and Fraser came calling um, at, at that particular point, And I really wanted to get back into it, just purely for the interesting work, because I knew who Fraser and Fraser were. And I know what sort of impact that they do have on the industry. For anybody that's watching that doesn't understand what that word means, genealogy, yeah. could you just explain to us a little bit about what that is and, and the process, how that would work? So in its simplest terms, let's say a solicitor um, has a will on their desk and that will was perhaps made you know, 10, 20 years ago and they're going through the list of beneficiaries and there could be a number of beneficiaries on there. And yes, they've probably found 90% of those beneficiaries. They've all stayed at the same addresses. They're all still in the UK, which is great. But there may be that odd one or two there that they've lost contact with and no one in the family knows where these people are. 
it's our job effectively to find them, whether they be still in the UK or as if they've even moved overseas, which is kind of where we add our experience there as well, because we do have a lot of contacts um, in, in foreign countries as well. That's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, if you look at the amount of expats, I think is the, the, the terminology, isn't it? People that have gone over to Spain or wherever it may yeah. be. Um, certainly, I've worked with lawyers and, and, and legal professionals where this has been a big thing. What's the process? How, how do you guys do what you do? I mean, how long does it take? What's the, what's the journey normally? It, if they've remained in the, in the UK, it, it's a lot easier. We have, I mean, I'm not going to give away all of our trade secrets, <laughs> to be honest, because I don't want everybody to do it. But we have yeah. a lot of kind of um, different formats that we use um, within the office. Um, a lot of it can be fairly straightforward, but it's a lot of expertise, really. Sure. And, you know, lots of years of experience. I mean, we've, we've got guys in our research team and the case managers that have been with the, with the firm for, goodness me, 20, 30 some of them getting on for 40 years now. So, wow. you know, there is a, a lot of experience within, within that office. So I think it's just knowing where to start, what's gonna be, you know, really more kind of time comprehensive for the client, but also money comprehensive as well. So just adapting to, to whatever search we do. And that's, and that's what we'll do. It's really good work. I mean, I, I must say, I, I love working in the private client sector. So I think that probate, it's such a difficult time for families. I can imagine if you're a beneficiary that, that wasn't aware of a, a passing family member leaving uh, or losing a family member, that can be quite traumatic. Yeah. So you kind of, it, it's, it's got some bad news for you, but also got some good news for you. What, what sort of scenarios are you aware of the, off the top of your head? Give me, a, give me a great example of somebody that was really, really kind of benefiting from, from meeting Fraser and Fraser. And Yeah, I, I'll tell you a, a very recent case that we had come in last year. Um, so uh, a, a, one of our competitors had a go at it, to be fair. And, you know, a lot of the time we, we get that. You know, we get, we get cases off other genealogists um, where the solicitor has instructed them and perhaps they don't have the contacts that we have in, in various jurisdictions around the world. So this jurisdiction happened to be Jamaica. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, you have to have some expertise out on the ground, feet on yeah. the ground, really, um, out, out, out over there, really. Um, so it was a lady that died in her, I think she was nearly 90, unfortunately, in London. She'd come over to this country in the 60s. Yep. Um, unfortunately died um, and she'd lost contact with her, with her family and primarily with her two daughters and a son, as it turns out. Um, and like I say, they were believed to be back in Jamaica. So we were given that work. We found the son very, very quickly. And he was able to put us in contact with one of the daughters who'd actually moved to Miami. Wow. And from that, the hardest one to find was actually the, the other sister that still lived in London. Wow. Um, so we actually took the longest to find <laughs> her, funnily enough. But it was all done within a matter, matter of a couple of weeks. And the three siblings hadn't talked to each other in over 30 years. Oh, wow. And we put them back together, which was, which was great, which to be honest, that's what it's all about really. And they're all talking to each other now mm. and they've got, they'd lost contact with their mum, unfortunately, but they had some, you know, mementos of, her, of the mum as well. So, you know, that's really, that's the perfect scenario for us where we get a case, we can get it solved really, really quickly but also there's a kind of a, a human element to it, to it as well. So, you know. I'm just taken back. Do you remember the Scylla Black surprise, surprise? <laughs> we, I, I've, got, I've got images of that. But it's funny because, I mean, if we look at family dynamics nowadays, more so than ever, um, you see families separating and, you know, father goes off or children's fall out with, with, with parents. It's happening more and more. So this industry in which you specify, it must just be growing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not, I mean, we would say our jobs become perhaps that little bit more difficult now mm. because, you know, probably 20, 30, 40 years ago, people did stay within the UK primarily, didn't they? Yeah. But now over the last 20 years, people have moved abroad. So it just becomes that a lot harder. And that's where kind of the expertise comes in as well. And like I said to you before, the contacts that we have around the world in different jurisdictions, that really kind of helps us um, 
perhaps above our competitors, but then our competitors will probably say that they have contacts in those areas as well. So, you know, you, you pay your money and you take your choice, really, I think. So in addition to genealogy, Fraser and Fraser, yeah. what else is it that Fraser and Fraser can provide? So I think in a perfect example, I think if someone was to walk into a solicitor's office um, and say that my, ne my next door neighbours died, um, I don't think there was any family. Now, the solicitor at that point can't take that as an instruction, obviously, but what they can do is pass the details on to us and we, at our own cost and risk, will find an administrator for them. We will speak to the administrator and we will advise them that that solicitor had actually given us the case in the first place and therefore it would probably be within their interest to work with that solicitor in actually conducting the estate. Um, now, the solicitor obviously is delighted with that because alternatively what could happen is that estate would end up on perhaps the bone of a Cantia list, which would be open to all and sundry to kind of have a go at um, and perhaps less reputable and uh, people or genealogists out there, one man bands or whatever that charge very high fees and take a long time to do that work would, you know, would be let loose to have a go at it really. So the solicitor's happy, obviously the administrator's happy and we're happy to know that obviously we've helped everybody out. So in addition to legal professionals that will be watching this video, this is going to be available on YouTube. Yep. If a member of the public is watching this, would you mind explaining to them what an administrator is and what bone of a cancer is? Okay. So an administrator is someone that's put in charge of the estate, so they're responsible. Um, and bone of a cantier is the, the treasury solicitors list. So these are the estates that effectively there seems to be no will or no next of kin. And they get put on this list. It used to be put on there once a week. Um, and it used to be put on a Thursday at midnight, if I remember rightly. And genealogists would look at that list and everybody <laughs> would go chasing around the country. And yeah. Out of that obviously came the TV programme, which is Air Hunters, of which Fraser and Fraser were very much at the forefront of. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously stopped now, but the repeats are obviously still on quite a few different channels. Um, but the Treasury Solicitor List effectively is the government list to say that there is no will and then seems to be no next of kin, so that genealogists or members of the public can go on there and see if they can do something about it it's better to find somebody that would inherit the money. We, we would say, um, I mean, I think the Treasury Solicitor gives the fact that I think only about 70% of these cases can be solved. We would disagree with that because the intestacy rules are so accommodating. Yeah. There is generally always somebody that could inherit that, that money. Um, so we're quite confident when we get an intestate case that there will be a, a solution for all. Well, we work with a number of solicitors, as you know. Yep. And uh, probate practitioners also. Yep. And Fraser and Fraser come up a lot. And it is one of those brands that, again, it's been known for so long. But I do think something you mentioned was about people, the expertise there. And people do trust you. They seem to really enjoy working with Fraser and Fraser because if you're a solicitor or a legal professional with a duty of care, um, you've got to make sure that you've got the best people involved. So I would suggest from, from this side of the fence that you guys are, are doing a great job and everybody seems to very much enjoy working with you guys. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, um, and we were talking about this earlier, look, our services don't come up every day of the week and we, we, we totally accept that. It purely is a numbers game for us. And, you know, you mentioned before about other services that, that we provide. Our core service is missing beneficiaries and intestate estates and family tree work. And look, if we could do that all day long, that's what we would do. But we realise that they don't come up every day of the week. And there are other services that we can provide to solicitors that they really need help with there and then. So these would be things like certificate ordering, overseas bankruptcy searches, um, asset searches, um, and like I say, we have a free family tree check. A number of our services, by the way, are free. And if there is a service that a solicitor thinks that we can help with, and they, they contact us and it turns out that we can't, we're not gonna waste anybody's time. What we will say to them is, look, we can't help you with that, but the chances are we know that somebody that, that can, and we'll just pass them on. 
which is, you know, obviously providing a solution for them there and then. So what we ask solicitors to do is kind of use us as a sounding board, really, to say, look, can you help us with this? It's a yes or no answer, to be perfectly honest. But if we can't, we try and provide that solution. Guidance is so important, yeah. so important. Um, okay, so going back to what you're saying about assets and, and, and um, certificates, talk us through that process, because if you're a member of, of, of the public and you go to a law firm, the law firm comes to you, what kind of information do they need to provide you with to enable you to, to get started effectively? With the certificate side of things or with, with missing beneficiaries? Let's go for about. both. If okay, you... so missing beneficiaries. Look, we would need obviously a full name, a yep. date of birth if they have it, um, last known address would be, would be useful as well. So those are the three things that we would we would like. They don't always come up, yeah. you know, as a three. Perhaps they'll have two of them, and perhaps not the other one. But we were quite confident to, you know, find that person with the information that's provided anyway. And of course, it, but it depends on what name. Smiths and Browns are going to be a problem if you haven't got an address yeah. or a date of birth or whatever it may be. But there we go. We you know we, we've certainly had those in the past um, with certificate ordering. Um, what we say there is, look, you know, the GRO sometimes are a, a the general registry office are sometimes quite slow at getting them. We do have an emergency service which we can get through a little bit quicker. Um, but you know, it, it, it's horses for courses, really. But we can we can help certainly help out with that. So Nick, obviously we've got a really good idea of what it is that you guys do. What's it going to cost? Well, I think that's what differentiates us between us and our competitors, really, because I know full well that, you know, based on my previous experience with, with another genealogy provider, um, working with them when a case used to come in, um, it used to go straight through to one of the case managers. Um, they would deal with all of the research, the quoting, the liaison with the customer, so everything effectively. But they would start charging out at a case manager rate. So from the get-go, that hourly rate is kind of ramping up. With Fraser's, it's it's completely different. Yes, you will be given a case manager, and if you use us kind of numerous times, you'll be given the same case manager, which is really nice as well. Um, but also what will happen is, uh, the case manager will just deal with the liaison, the quoting, but the research is actually done by a team of experts. Um, now they charge out a lower rate, and I'm sure. not demeaning their work <laughs> at all, by the way. Yeah. Um, so they will charge out for a senior case manager at rate in the research team at £100 per hour. And for just a researcher, it's £75 an hour. And our case manager rate is only £175 an hour as well. Okay. So we're quite confident when we're put up against our competitors um, that we will be more than competitive um, with them, if not beating them by quite a margin. That's very important when you look at the inheritance side of it. Yep. Obviously, anybody that's that's passed away would want the beneficiaries to receive the maximum amount due. You know, they don't want it being tied up in fees. So that's no. that's really reassuring that that Fraser works that way. Yeah, and we you know we have different fee options for for the client as well. So we will do time spent, which effectively is the hourly rate that I just spoke about. We will do fixed fee. Um, we will do contingency fees as well. So if there's nobody to instruct, so we talked about intestate states, uh, states before, mm. if there's no one to instruct them, we can look at that on a kind of uh, contingency basis. Or we do a finder's fee where the beneficiaries are known, but we can go out and uh, obviously negotiate a fee with the beneficiary when we do find them as well. So we have all these different options and it's really up to the client which, which fee they, they want. Lovely. Insurance. Yeah. Let's talk about insurance because this is a a big part of what you do as well. So yep. tell us a little bit more about that side of things. So again, I think we work a little bit differently than some or all of our competitors. I'm not sure what, what their kind of uh, ranges are at the moment, but what we will do is we kind of broker the deal for them. Mm. So we will get as many quotes as the client wants. Generally two would be enough, but we have kind of links with three or four different insurance providers as well. Um, and we will um, either uh, match any quote that they've had previously or we will beat it as well when it comes to missing beneficiary insurance um, certainly but we also offer missing will insurance as, uh, as an add-on as well. Important stuff again. Um, okay, 
we've known each other for a number of years, Nick. We have. Um, that's probably why you're so grey. It's um, <laughs> I've got other stresses in life. But <laughs> <laughs> what is it about PLG that that you enjoy working with? What is it that we bring to to your business? Yeah, I think PL, we've like I say we've worked. I've worked with PLG for quite a number of years now, and I think when I go in and promote your services to my clients as well, that you're in our in our handbook or in our booklet that we hand out. Um, people are very impressed because I think it takes away stress from them as well. Um, what will happen is a lot of solicitors these days are kind of selling on a fixed fee basis. So what they want is they want to get the maximum out of the services that they need to provide. And I think PLG offers them that. And when I speak to them, I say, do you have a relationship with a local estate agent? Now, some of them will say, yes, they do, because they're passing back conveyancing work or whatever it may be. But when you sell in the PLG product and the fact that you work with, you work on a multi-agency basis and your fee um, and all the different, the assessments that you provide and everything like that, the valuations, I think they see you as a one-stop shop, that they don't have to go to different places for these sorts of things as well. But also what I found is that um, a lot of estates have multiple properties in them. So yes, the home may be in central London, let's just say, but the deceased had a portfolio of properties. And it could be holiday homes, it could be second homes, whatever it may be. And they may be up in the north, they could be down southwest or whatever. And who is the solicitor to know who the best estate agents are to work with in those particular areas? Whereas you will have done all the due diligence and taken away that kind of, you know, problem for them and I think that's what they're looking for and it's all compliance checked and everything like that and I think in this day and age I think every box that a solicitor can tick I think PLG provides that. It's interesting it's, um, I think we're both very much like that as, as, as companies we're both very much trying to save that estate agent time keep them compliant yep. ensure that that service is, is delivered and I, I, I believe that's why Fraser and Fraser and PLG work so well. So Nick, listen, we are going to put up at the end of this video your contact details and how people can get in touch. Fantastic. Uh, but for the time being, thank you ever so much for coming in and seeing us. Uh, see you guys at home. I hope you enjoyed our, uh, our chin wag and you've learned something about Fraser and Fraser. And we look forward to speaking to you soon.